Hello, welcome to my talk. And this is my garlic bread I made. Uh, I just take bread, but uh, it doesn't have to, it can be vegan butter and garlic, and it's really healthy for the winter. So I want to talk to you about um, the EU ban on kosher slaughter. In my opinion, all slaughter is wrong. But ask yourself why the EU uh, decided to get together and ban circumcision and kosher and halal slaughter. I mean, is this the most important item on their agenda? And the answer is, why would European people bother to spend all that time banning kosher slaughter, claiming it is better for animals? In my view, all slaughter is wrong. So why don't you ban all slaughter and not discriminate? This is the question. And the answer is anti-Semitism and anti-Islam uh, is still very much alive in Europe. And all these uh, decisions are not doing animals any favor because animals, to be stunned with electrical, uh, electrical um, what is it called, with electricity, is not uh, pain-free. To be half dead, half alive, doesn't seem to me very humane. And they also gas. I saw a film where they gas uh, baby chickens. I mean, this is using um, Nazi murder methods on animals. I mean, you could also claim the Nazis used humane w methods of killing Jews compared to the Ukrainians who would just shoot them in the forest. So for me, yeah, you might think it's extreme to compare, but think about it. Why would you shock and stun animals, leaving them half dead, half alive? And the whole factory production of animals is absolutely cruel. And to present animals as if they have a happy life, put bells on them as they do in Switzerland and say, oh, we take care of our animals. But then you shoot them in the field. Uh, it is allowed to shoot cows. And also, the whole idea of slaughter is basically not humane. So why would you discriminate against a type of slaughter which so much evidence proves is, is less painful and torturous than leaving an animal half dead, half alive, possibly because of electrical shock? It doesn't really stun them. It doesn't really eliminate their emotions, their, their, their ability to feel pain. So it's just BS. It's just a scam. And I wonder why the European High Court of Justice finds that this is the most important item, not discrimination against minorities, um, not uh, racism, not uh, race crimes, not... Um, addiction issues which are plaguing Europe. I think it's more important to address why uh, people feel the need to um, forget reality by uh, taking drugs and alcohol. Wow, the really rain. I'm happy there's rain. It's good for the flowers and the trees here. Here in the Middle East, we don't have a lot of rain, so it's a blessing. Uh, even though, yeah, we'll have to walk in the rain, it's okay. So going back to the topic, it's really important that European people wake up to the fact that they're being cheated by their governments and being led to thinking that um, the way minorities uh, live their lives is cruel. I, I do admit that there are some practices that are cruel within Judaism and Islam. I'll give you some examples. In Judaism, um, there is Tarnagor Kaparot, during Yom Kippur, where they swing a, a chicken on top of the head. I think that is absolutely cruel. I think the whole idea of eating meat and using animals is cruel, but that is one cruel thing. From the Islam, I can imagine um, the cruelty is, um, I don't think it's Muslim, but there is this mutilation of girls, genital mutilation, which is widely practiced in Egypt, I've heard. and. Um, it's really hard to understand a country that has such a progressive culture compared to the Middle East is doing, is practicing these things. Um, let's see, Somalia, I think, uh, Indonesia, and various countries have genitalia mutilation of young girls, which is completely 
unacceptable, as well as marrying off young girls. But you have to also understand the background for both practices is very harsh reality where girls are raped, uh, a brutality of life, and no excuse. And this is absolutely practices that should be banned. But if you know where it comes from, you can understand the background. Because they try to control sexuality this way by focusing on the women and not the men, which is absolutely wrong. But this is how they develop, how these practices evolved. And uh, they should be absolutely banned. But circumcision is very different because it also has some m medical uh, reasons. And I don't think it's something that should be banned. I think it's something that should be questioned. Yes, but not banned. And especially difficult for me to accept this is because um, there is a lot of violence involved in demonizing cultures without understanding them and focusing on minority groups. And statistically, uh, I understand that according to statistics, um, there are about 6% Muslims in the EU and 0.2 Jews in the EU, which is a miracle there were even any Jews because a third of them were murdered during uh, World War II, during the Holocaust. And the Muslims, um, well, they let in all these Muslims and then they don't allow them to practice their own culture, even to dress in a traditional way. Come on, that is... That is an op oppressive fascist action to prevent a person from practicing their traditions and tying it up to terror. I think that is absolutely absurd. And um, it seems paranoid, it seems crazy, it seems very logical. So the EU uh, used decision to focus on these minorities that together make up about 6% of the population of Europe, and this is what you do during an epidemic where so many people are killed, uh, die, it's not killed, killed is the wrong word, so many people die of this virus, and this is what you're deciding. And when I see these riots in Holland, and even in Denmark, which is surprising, uh, Denmark, Spain, uh, people protesting uh, lockdown, I mean, I think it is essential. Here in Israel, a nation that's not known for being obedient, people really comply with the lockdown, even though it has a very serious economic price. Uh, except the ultra-Orthodox uh, that have a problem with their school system being shut down. They're not connected to computers. And for them, isolation is really isolation. We can go on YouTube. We can go on internet they don't have this equipment they're very isolated and people that live in isolation also become very vicious and they also have um a lot of extremism grows from this feeling of isolation and if the eu is really aware of the psychological factors that go into people becoming radicalized and extreme it is the feeling of being isolated and it's the feeling of being attacked and not accepted and being demonized and discriminated against. So your your attempts of lessening the problem of, of terror makes it worse because you don't really understand why people choose to identify with radical um, Islamic movements that really have nothing to do with the sources of Islam at all. Um, but they have to do more with political uh, forces that use the, the 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 feelings of uh, frustration of young uh, Muslim people that feel they're not part of the society in which they were born and grew up in. So you want to have more radical Islam, then go ahead and discriminate against them even more. Make them feel even less welcome in your country. Because if you take people on, you have to really allow them to, to live in freedom. They're non-violent practices. And if you think that slaughtering animals instantly is more humane, is less humane than giving them electrical currents that make them half dead, half alive, and feel and 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 die slow, painful death, I don't think you really understand um, medicine either. I don't understand who makes these decisions, but for me, it's very clear that the people who make these decisions do not 
rely, do not go into scientific research. Because if they did, they wouldn't reach these conclusions. So my conclusion is to question and also to ask why um, is the EU influenced, still influenced by forces that call for discrimination against minorities? And when will they ever learn? I mean, it's just marked International Holocaust Day. When are you ever going to learn to stop discriminating? That it doesn't lead to a more peaceful society. Quite the opposite. Nobody likes to be discriminated against. Nobody wants to be killed either. So ban all slaughter, and, and then you will gain the higher moral ground. But as long as you slaughter in a more painful way, a more cruel way, and, and present it otherwise to intelligent thinking people, you have a problem. So I'm surprised that um, animal rights people are not more involved in actually going against these lies. But the problem is they've also been brainwashed and they don't really know what they're saying when they think that kosher and halal slaughter is in fact more cruel. Check the facts. See what it's like. Visit one of these humane slaughterhouses and try to ban all slaughter and then I'll be with you. Try to ban all slaughter of all animals, I'm with you. Try to focus on minorities and demonize them. You can't really say you're pro-animals because being people that are animal activists in their hearts are also against any sort of discrimination and any sort of violence towards anyone, whether they're animal or not animal. Um, so, or as I see it, we are a form of animal as well. So what you don't want done to yourself, you know, you, nobody wants to be discriminated against. Nobody wants to not be able to wear their cultural heritage in pride. So if we want to, if we speak about LGBT rights, we should also speak about the rights of traditional societies to be proud of who they are. Peace, light, and love today and all days. And have a happy and warm winter with your pets and your loved ones.